Good morning, everybody. I hope that you're well. So this weekend, specifically today, I really wanted to go on a big hike just for the fun of it really, but also because as you may know, I'm going to Pakistan in September, there's gonna be a lot of trekking and I want to do as much training as possible. So I wanted to do a big hike today and I asked a few of my friends and no one wanted to go with me. <laughs> or maybe they wanted to, but they couldn't. Or maybe they could, but they didn't want to. So, I'm gonna go by myself. I feel like I'm often preaching on this channel that you don't need friends to go and do the things that you really want to do, specifically solo traveling, solo backpacking. That's what I specialize in. And I solo backpack across the world. So why can't I go in a solo hike in my own country? It's gonna be fine. Right? I mean, I do want to do a really big hike and I'll go into the details a bit more, but it's going to be in the North Downs area, which is kind of like Southeast London, because I'm spending the night at my friend's house in Greenwich this evening. And so I kind of chose somewhere that was like kind of on the way. But it's 21 kilometers. That's a solid half marathon that I'm going to be doing by myself. And it's my first ever solo hike. It is outside of my comfort zone, but that's okay because that's what we need to do to grow as people. Now the weather is not looking so great. It's kind of like on and off rain is what it looks like, but the weather has been pretty unpredictable in England in general at the moment. And I said to myself, I'm going to do this hike no matter what the weather. I'm going, um, so this is what I'm wearing. I've got a Gymshark long sleeve chop. I've also got a Gymshark kind of medium support sports bra on underneath. I've got some Tala leggings on. I'm not wearing my walking trousers today. Just didn't feel like it, felt like wearing leggings. So these are the Tala Skin Lux leggings. They're very, very nice. I've got some hiking socks on. And then I have a waterproof jacket in my backpack, which I will show you in just a second. I honestly actually, I don't think I need any other layers because although it's on enough rain, it's not cold. So I think I'm gonna be all right to be honest. I might even get a bit warm in this. So you may or may not know that last year I started wearing glasses. I don't have a super strong prescription. It's minus one and minus 1.25, but I do have to wear glasses for driving and it's just really nice wearing them out and about. However, when I have to wear my glasses, if I'm doing any kind of exercise, that's annoying, sweaty on my face. And also if I have to wear them, like if I'm wearing a mask, that's very annoying, fogging up the glasses. And so I would like to move to contact lenses. And so just the other day, I had my very first appointment and she, as in the optician, has given me a trial pack of 10 lots of contact lenses, which is what I've been wearing. She told me there were three types, right? Ooh. There's like the cheapest ones, the medium ones, and the most expensive ones. And she's given me the cheapest ones. And although they're good, I do feel them in my eye throughout the day. So I think when I have my checkup with them on, I hope I'm putting this in the right eye. Ah, left, right, left, right, down, down, down. No, it didn't go in. Damn it. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Why? Why does it just not go in? These are the cheapest ones and I can't, when they're in my eyes, I can't feel them in my eyes. And so on my checkup, I'm basically gonna ask for the more expensive ones. So now I've finally got those contacts in. Before I set off, let's do a little, what's in my backpack for the day? What's in my hiking backpack? Like I mentioned, I've got my waterproof jacket. I hope it doesn't rain too much, but if it does, I will feel equipped with this. It has a hood. And also if I just need a bit of extra layer of warmth, I've got that along the way. There will be a pub where I plan on getting like a bit of a late lunch and obviously I've just had breakfast but because it's such a big hike I know I'm going to need refueling along the way so I went to Sainsbury's last night and I got these like cereal bars never tried them before but it's a company called Trek and I saw them and I thought I'm going on a trek that seems like logical sense that seems like the right thing that I should be eating. Two packets of Pom Bears, not one packet, two packets. Haribo straw. Belgian chocolate chip shortbread. Cause I am the healthy 
biggest hiker in the world. So that's it for my snacks. I may or may not get through the whole lot. I feel like that's a lot. Surely I'm not gonna get through all of those snacks. I, of course, am bringing water bottles. I'm bringing just this one. You guys know that I have a Grail GeoPress water bottle, which is a purifying and filtering water bottle. They are amazing. And I recently got the Grail Ultralight as well, which is very similar, just a little bit smaller. Um, and these are so great for when you're hiking out into the wilderness and you wanna fill up your water uh, from a natural water source. And I will link how to purchase these in the description. So those water bottles are in the two outside pockets. So I'm going to close it up. And then finally in this kind of front zip pocket, I have some hay fever tablets many different types because honestly I actually don't know which one's the most effective um, but when my hay fever is bad I just take all of them and hope for the best. I also have some hay fever eye drops obviously really hoping I'm not getting gonna get attacked by hay fever today but you never know. I've got my purse in there with like my driver's license and stuff. I have my airpods. I don't know if I'm actually gonna use these because I might just want to listen to the sounds of nature, but I like to know that I'll have them just in case I fancy listening to some music along the way. So I'm not going to be talking to anyone, or maybe I will, I don't know. Who knows who I'll meet today. And a mask, of course, when I go in to have a little pub lunch. I have some hand sanitizer, um, I have some sun cream, and that's about it. Okay, I've made. Oh. Hello, I've made myself a coffee for the road. It's gonna be like an hour journey to my start point. Um, and I think I'm really I'm quite nervous, you know, but you know, it's, it's all gonna be a learning experience if it doesn't go perfectly. But before I set off, I would like to introduce the sponsors of today's video, Surfshark. Surfshark are a VPN, which is something we should all be having on our devices in 2021. A VPN is a virtual private network, which essentially means that whilst turned on, you can browse the internet completely privately by encrypting your internet activity so no one can track or steal your data. This is useful at any time you're connected to the internet, but particularly when you are connected to a public network, like at an airport, for example. Without Surfshark, hackers can quite easily enter on your device. But when you have Surfshark switched on, it acts like a virtual virtual shield on your connection to keep you safe on your device. Another benefit of Surfshark is being able to change your virtual location to pretty much anywhere in the world, which allows you to access media or services that are only available in certain countries. Or if you want to watch TV from back home when you are abroad, Surfshark will allow you to do that with a click of a button. Surfshark are one of the only VPNs that allows you to use it on an unlimited number of your devices with just the one account. And Surfshark are giving you guys 83% off and an extra three months for free when you use my code backpack or using the link in the description. Okay, I have arrived in the little village of Down, which is where my hike is starting. So I found my hike today on Fancy Free Walks, which I've talked about on this channel, I think, before. It's an amazing website for loads of different walks in the southeast of England. So it's called Down, Halstead and Knockholt. And don't laugh at me, but I did print off all the directions. But only because I wouldn't normally do that, but one, I'm by myself, two, it's a PDF, so I would normally be reading off my phone, but this is a really long hike, and although I do think my phone would last that length of time, I just don't want to risk it, because imagine if I did rely on my phone and it ran out, like, halfway for whatever reason, and then I was lost by myself in the middle of nowhere. It just didn't seem like a good idea. So I've printed um, all of the directions off. It's eight pages. This hike is 21 kilometers or 13 miles. It's in the region of Kent. Oh, I'm now in Kent. And it says, this is a peaceful and enchanting long walk in the green hills and meadows of Northwest Kent. This area is a large oasis of unspoilt country as far as can be imagined from the busy metropolis. All the harder then to believe that one half of this walk is actually within the London borough of Bromley. There is just one short scratchy section where shorts might be uncomfortable. Some of the walking is along quiet country lanes, but walkers may need to be aware of those middle-aged men in Lycra who career about on two wheels. Oh, I didn't realise I was going to be meeting my future husband today. As always, boots are recommended if there has been any rain, although walking shoes are adequate at other times. Your dog will probably need to be lifted over some of the stiles. Oh, I don't have a dog to lift over the stiles, making this a problem if he is a Labrador-sized 
that's not an issue. It's just me. Right, so I've got my hiking boots. I don't drive in my hiking boots, so I'm gonna get into those now and we're gonna get going. So this is the gorgeous little village of Down, which is where my hike begins. And I guess we'll start following these first directions. So from Down Village, walk up the high street, past the church, the church is there, ignoring High Elms Road on your left, wherever that is, um, on the Cudham Road, going past Down Hall on your left. So these are the kind of directions that I'm following and uh, what I love about fancy free walks is that they do get very very specific and intricate and they're just it's just fun to follow along because the other way I would find hikes is on all trails which is good um, but you do need your phone for that because you're you're tracking yourself along the map like on your phone if that makes sense and there's no like written directions. Okay, so I'm ignoring High Elms, High Elms Road, which is there, and I'm keeping going. It's just nice. It's just more fun to follow written directions rather than just following a line on a map. It feels a bit more personal and often like whoever's written it shows their personality a bit with like however they've written the directions. But anyway, I'm gonna put the phone down now because I should probably concentrate on where I'm going. But, oh, I need to set off my, um, my Apple Watch. God, I can't, I can't not be tracking. This is a big piece of exercise. So I'm gonna set it for hiking. It's 9.27, open goal, ready, let's go. Look at this path. I feel like I'm definitely about to get stung. Oh no, oh no, this is, this is not gonna go well. Can I get stung through my, um, ow. Can I get stung through my leggings? Like from stinging nettles? Probably. Oh, I feel like it's already stinging. Or is that just my imagination? I'm not so sure. Into the wilderness. Oh, it definitely stings. It definitely stings. <gasps> oh no, oh no. So close to the beginning of the hike as well. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> okay, we're through, we're through. It's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay. Am I okay? I think I'm okay. I don't, I don't think they can sting through my waterproof jacket, but oh, my legs feel a bit stingy. Let's hope that that doesn't progress. Let's just hope that that's just me imagining things. As if, as if I would have to go through all of those stinging nettles right at the beginning of my hike. Ooh, look at these views. I'm really struggling to know what to wear because I'm quite warm and it is raining. Like this piece of paper is getting wet, but it's like frizzy hair rain. It's not strong rain at all. And when I put on my rain jacket, I'm getting a bit too hot but when I take it off, I feel like I'm getting a little bit damp. I'm kind of hoping that this rain just kind of eases off, which will make my life a little bit easier. Anyway, this is nice. I really, really hope I don't get lost on this hike. Really, really hope I don't get lost. Just gone eight kilometers in, just coming through the little cute village of Halstead. The, the directions are getting a bit confusing at this point, but hopefully I'm not gonna get too lost. I think I have to walk through the village next. Okay, I've done 10.61 kilometers, which is just over by halfway point, because the whole thing's 21 kilometers. And I'm feeling really peckish actually. Uh, probably still a while to go before the pub, so I think I'm gonna have one of my schneckety schnecks. Maybe a trek bar, start with the healthiest stuff and then we can move on to the less healthy stuff later. It's like, it's not raining and it hasn't been raining. I don't know if I'm in focus, probably not. Um, but it's very just damp. I just feel wet. And I don't feel like it's worth putting my rain jacket on because 
I don't really feel like it's gonna make a difference because it's just like the air is just damp. I'm gonna go with one of each, you know? I feel like I could have two. So let's go with a cocoa oat one. And I don't know why I bought them in the boxes. I could have just taken out of the, them out of the box. I probably need some water too. I have not been staying hydrated. Do as I say, not as I do. Stay hydrated. Sorry, this is the worst camera angle you've probably ever seen. I thought about bringing a tripod on this hike, but then I just thought that would be a bit much. These cyclists just passed over there and they looked at me like, what is she doing? <laughs> Luckily, I haven't passed too many people on this hike, so I haven't been getting too many weird looks. Though a lot of D of E groups, well I say a lot about, I've passed about three D of E groups. I mean, I'm assuming they're D of E, just like groups of teenagers holding a map. Get this back on. I've been going, by the way, for two hours and 24 minutes. So that means that I'm on track to complete the whole thing in five hours, minus the pub stop that I'm gonna do. Speaking of DOV, my mum, she volunteers um, for the DOV trips for the students in the school that she works at. And uh, she's actually off on a DOV weekend this weekend as well. Look at that house, so nice. So about 18 kilometers down and I just stopped off in the old jail pub, which uh, according to Fancy Free Walks is one of the best in the area. And I didn't want to film in there because I got a bit of social anxiety, um, but it was quite cool. Yeah, or like, as the name says, it used to be a jail. And unfortunately they didn't have any seating inside. I guess it is a Sunday lunchtime. So I sat outside, a little bit rainy, but it was all right. And um, I got a country vegetable soup, which was very nice. It was just like on the starters list. I had that with a baguette because I wasn't feeling like overly hungry, especially with all the snacks in my bag as well. But I just thought that was something really nice to kind of warm me up. And I also had a berry cider, which will see me suitably tipsy for the final three kilometers of my walk. And to be honest, it was just really nice to sit down for a second because yeah, reaching the 18K mark, I was really starting to, my legs to feel tired. So it was nice to sit down just for 45 minutes. But now leaving the pub, pressing on to the final three kilometers, I think. It has just started raining, which is why I have got the rain jacket on, but it's still not too bad. Um, so hopefully it doesn't absolutely pour down, but I have switched from my main camera, which I've put in my backpack, to my GoPro, just because I don't want that one getting too wet. This field is huge. So I've done over 19K now, so hopefully only two kilometers to go. I feel like I'm on the, the final stretch. I just, I just feel like, I feel like I'm nearing the end. And here we are, I recognise this. Oh, with an alarm going off. Uh, we are back in the village of Down, where the walk began. So I'm just gonna go back to my car, and then I have done it. Woohoo, I did it, I completed it. Can we do a quick comparison of how I look now versus how I looked when I left in the car? I feel a lot more dishevelled, that's for sure. Though not as drowned rat as I was expecting to look. I did put my hood up for that last little bit. But do you wanna hear the stats? So, total time, four hours and 39 minutes and 42 seconds. Total distance, 20.8 kilometers, so a little bit less than what I was expecting, actually. Only 200 meters less. Average pace, 13 minutes and 27 seconds per kilometer. That's pretty good for a hike, actually. That's quite fast. I, I would normally aim for like, 15 minutes per kilometer if I was doing a hike normally. 1,319 active kilocalories burnt and 1,714 total kilocalories. Average heart rate, 121 beats per minute. Elevation gain, 348 meters. That's pretty good actually. 
I was not expecting there to be much elevation gain at all on this hike because I don't really know why, I just wasn't. Um, so I'm quite impressed with that. I'm, 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 I'm pleased actually. Obviously it makes it harder when there's more elevation gain, but I am pleased because it's always better training for my fitness. But no, I'm feeling very, very accomplished. I'm really glad that it didn't rain too much on me. Um, obviously I, I was equipped for it anyway, but it is always nice just to stay a little bit drier. But thank you so much for following along. I really hope you enjoyed this video. When I did the poll on Instagram asking whether you wanted to see a city or wilderness hike, a few of you DM me and said, oh, I actually want to see both. So I do think I will do either a solo or with some friends city hike as well, which I'll vlog and be able to show you like a long one, like a, you know, 20 kilometer one again. Cause I think those are the ones that are really, really good for my training and will help me be better when I get to Pakistan. But anyway, I'm blabbering on now. Thank you so much for watching. I'm off to Greenwich and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.